Hello and welcome to the Church of the Palms devotion series. Our staff has taken a short break from recording during Holy Week, so we've prepared a look back at a few of the devotions from spring of 2023. Thank you for joining us. Our lesson today is the Gospel according to Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 26. Luke 5, 12 through 26. It's rather long, so please bear with me. Once when Jesus was in one of, his, one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I do choose, be clean be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he ordered him to tell no one, Go, Jesus said, and show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for testimony to them. But now, more than ever, the word about Jesus spread about. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But Jesus withdrew to deserted place to play, to pray. One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal, to heal. Just then some men came carrying a paralyzed man on bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and led, them, led him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, Jesus said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies, who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Stand up and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, Stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took that he had took what he had been laying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God, and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As you just heard, there are two miracle stories in this scripture. Miracle stories, I always loved them, even as a child growing up. While I don't really understand parables, the first story, the miracle story, is a man with leprosy who seemed to have no friend. A man with leprosy said to Jesus, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hands and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately leprosy left him, the scripture told us. Have you ever seen a leper or lepers? with your own eyes, have you ever lived among them? Leprosy is a terrible disease. It's not only painful, but it actually disconfigure a person's parts of the body, like toes and ears get cut off, and also even worse things can happen to a person. I remember I have seen many lepers in my life, and I remember vividly camping for two weeks um, at a leper's village in India, outside of Calcutta. 
when I was an MDiv student in Calcutta many, many years ago. It was a part of my internship as a seminary student. The whole village where a whole team of us, my friends and I who have gone to camp there, the whole village was um, people who are suffering from leprosy and their young children who are still clean without leprosy. We were there for two weeks to teach them how to clean themselves and how to create simple and delicious foods and teach them Bible stories to their children and play with the children. Some people have lost their limbs. When you lost part of your hands, doing necessary things, including cooking, is difficult. So we taught them how to eat fruits and vegetables raw without having to cook them. It was an eye-opening, heart-wrenching, and very humbling experience. I prayed for them, and I still pray for them now. They did not ask where God was. They did not complain. They were good people. They just lived with humility and leprosy and hope and pray that their children didn't get them and grow up uh, without catching leprosy and get away from the village and have normal lives. Of course, I wish Jesus was there and make them all clean and heal them, like this guy in our Bible story today. I do know Jesus was there, God was there, and still there with them today. But it is not our timing or schedule, but God's own, whether anybody gets clean um, or healed, isn't it? Having been there with them for two weeks makes me understand this passage, Bible passage, a little bit better. Our miracle story number two today is a little different. This paralyzed man had very good four friends who would actually, whose faith actually made him well. Nowhere in this passage we were told or we found that this guy had faith in Jesus and Jesus' healing power. He had very good friends who actually climbed the roof and opened the roof, removing the tiles and lowered him for Jesus in front to drop him down in front of Jesus so Jesus might heal him. Jesus actually did say that their faith had healed their friend who was paralyzed. I guess that this paralyzed man had no hope and was totally tired of his life and discouraged. I would guess that he was in despair about life. Have you ever been there in your life? I have sometimes. There are times in my life when I could not pray for myself. I was, as they say, down and out. That is when I got carried over to Jesus by f the faith of my friends in their prayers, their presence and love. I got healed from my despair and was restored to health by Jesus, by God, by the Holy Spirit. One of those times in my life was when my father and my best friend died unexpectedly. He was 51 and his first sickness ever. I was 21. I could not imagine living life without my father. I got scared of living, although I promised him that I will do my best to help my mother. Grief took a hold of me. I lost all my desire to live. I quit eating and I quit drinking water. My two closest friends would come in the night and would force, force fed me a little bit of food and force, made me, force me to drink a little bit of water. And um, I actually, even so, didn't last more than one month. I ended up in a hospital. That is where I had my experience of hearing Jesus telling me, pick up your mat and go home. I did. 
I went back to my college dorm where my friends were. And like the paralyzed man in today's scripture story, I did not glorify God until much, much later. But I'm spending all my adult life serving God through serving God's people. God healed me because of the faith my friends had in God's power to heal. There are times when it is you and me who get to carry our friends and our family members by being there, by praying for them regularly, and by listening to them. There are times because of our faith in God's power to heal, our loved ones get healed. Let us continue to bring to God in prayers those who cannot pray for themselves. God will heal them according to God's own power and timing and desire. Let us pray. Our most loving and gracious God, thank you for the stories of these two men in our scripture today. We know you still work miracles in our lives nowadays. Help us to believe in you. Teach us to have faith in your love and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.